this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of pinworm infections. And the signs and symptoms we'll talk about, some people may already know about, but there's going to be some that even clinicians may not know about. So pinworms are also known as Entrobius vermicularis. That is the scientific name for this particular species. They are nematodes, so they're roundworms. And an infection by pinworms causes a condition known as enterobiasis. So pinworm infections are common childhood infections, and they're more common in temperate regions of the world, and more common in crowded living conditions like institutions. But we can get them from things like daycares, anywhere where there's crowding of especially young children, where there's not a lot of hygiene, where there may be a lot of putting hands into mouth, that type of transmission. So there's a transmission of eggs that way. And even with the fact that eggs can be laid and there can be eggs in bedding, this can also lead to infection of others, including parents as well. Males are more likely to be affected than females, and males out will outnumber females two to one with pinworm infections. So let's talk about the signs and symptoms of pinworm infections. It's important to note that some patients with pinworms are asymptomatic and they have no symptoms at all. But one third of patients who have pinworm infections will not have or will not experience signs and symptoms. But what's going to be the most common symptom of a pinworm infection is what we call anal pruritus. So pruritus is an itching sensation. So it's going to be anal itching or perianal itching. So itching around the anus or on the anus itself. Itching is going to be severe. It's going to be intense itching. And what we're going to see is that there's going to be a particular pattern of this itching where the itching is worse at night and early in the morning. The reason is because the female pinworms will come out and lay eggs on the perimeter of the anus and this is what causes itching. There can also be a prickling sensation as well. So not only is there maybe itching sensation but there may be some prickling sensations as well. Some other findings we could see even in asymptomatic patients includes visible worms. So this is essentially where you actually see the worm and where we can often see these visible worms is when we do a tape test. So we use cellophane tape or any transparent tape. The tape's applied on the anus early on in the morning before using the bathroom, before taking a shower, etc., or before bathing. And then that's the best time you're going to collect either eggs or the worms themselves. You can't really see the eggs. They're microscopic, but you may be able to see these small little worms. They can look like tiny little threads. So that could be a finding we can see in patients who have pinworm infections. Some other signs and symptoms include diarrhea. So diarrhea is often going to occur when a patient is first infected with pinworms. So it's going to occur in initial acute infection. It's going to be a watery diarrhea. So if we look at the bristle stool chart, type 4 stool is a normal type of stool. and Type 5, 6, and 7 are going to be considered diarrhea. It's going to be, again, watery diarrhea. So diarrhea is increased frequency and or decreased consistency of stool. We can also see abdominal pain in some patients with pinworm infections. It's often going to be vague and nonspecific. It may occur in lower quadrants. And the reason is because of where the worms themselves are residing. So some of the pinworms will reside in the cecum. So the cecum is here or in the large intestine. This is where they are going to reside. And they can cause irritation and a little bit of inflammation that can cause some abdominal pain. So this is the reason why we can get some abdominal pain in certain patients. We can also see anorexia occurring as well in some patients. So anorexia is the medical term for a loss of appetite. Nausea may occur in some cases, although this is going to be more rare. And usually, if a patient has anorexia or loss of appetite or nausea, it's going to be when they have a heavy burden of infection. And in some patients, although more rare, some patients can get genitourinary infections. So genitourinary infections with pinworms are going to occur in females. It's going to be due to migration of the worms from the anus to the genitals and also to the urinary tract or the urethra. So we can see in some patients lower urinary tract symptoms, so dysuria, burning sensation when urinating, urinary frequency, frequently needing to urinate, or urinary urgency, a feeling of urgently needing to urinate. And then if the vagina and vulva is affected, we may get what we call vulval vaginitis. So this can cause some vaginal discharge in some patients. Now, it's also possible that we could get something called ectopic enterobiasis. 
This is more common in immunocompromised patients, although it could occur in some other patients, especially if they have a heavy parasite burden. So we can see findings like effects on the appendix. So there can be a blockage of the appendix leading to appendicitis. So this could occur where we get right lower quadrant pain. In some cases, the pinworms can penetrate through the bowel wall, especially in immunocompromised patients, leading to effects on the liver, also in the abdominal cavity, and also even in the lungs in some very rare cases. So those are some of the findings of what we call ectopic enterobiasis. Please check my full lesson on pinworm infections if you want more information on this topic. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Please also consider joining as member for members only content. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.